Welcome, my name's Adrian and this is another video in the series about SQL Basics. Today I'm going to tackle set operations. Set operations allow us to combine the results of multiple queries into a single result set. They are not used as frequently as other SQL features that we've talked about, but they can still come in handy in certain situations, so it's good to know how they work in practice. Let's get started. To use set operations, we need to have at least two tables with the same number of columns and the same column types. Take a look at a very simple example, which you can see on the screen right now. We have two tables, math lecturer and IT lecturer. Both tables use the same column names and types. Each of them contains the lecturer's name and the year they were born. You can also notice two lecturers, that is Forrest Santos and Ida Wagner, that can be found in both tables. These people give lectures in both maths and computer science. Now let's move on to set operations. Set operations in SQL allow us to combine results from multiple queries. There are four such operations, union, union all, intersect and except, which is also known as minus. Let's start with union all. When we use union all with two queries, we will get the results of both queries together in a single result set. If there are rows common to both queries, we'll get them twice. OK, let's write two separate queries. One for getting all maths lecturers born after 1980, the other one for getting all IT lecturers born after 1980. You can see both of these queries on the screen now. These queries are very simple and when we run them, we will get the results separately for both tables. Nothing new so far. Now, because these result sets have the same number of columns and the same column types, we can merge them into a single result set. That's where union all comes in handy. Take a look at the query now. We wrote the first query without a semicolon at the end. Then we put the keywords union all. Finally, we wrote the second query and added a semicolon at the very end. We'll see rows from the first query and rows from the second query combined into a single result set. As you can see, there's no need to run two very similar queries when we use union all. You could notice that union all does not get rid of duplicates. Lecturers that teach both maths and IT were shown twice. To get rid of the duplicated rows, we have to use union instead of union all. Union takes all the rows from the first query plus all the rows from the second query, but eliminates duplicates so that each unique row is shown only once. Coming back to our query, all we have to do is change union all to union in our query. That's a small change. If we now run it, Forrest Santos and Ida Wagner are each shown only once. That's the only difference between union all and union. The next set operation is intersect. Intersect works by only taking those rows that are present in both tables at the same time. If a row is only present in one of the tables, it won't be shown at all. Now let's discuss our query. All we have to do is change union to intersect. This keyword finds the intersection between our two tables. In other words, we'll only see lecturers that appear in both tables. We can see two rows in the resulting set, since only two people teach both math and IT. The last keyword to discuss is except. Except works by showing those rows that appear in the first table but do not appear in the second table at all. In other words, we'll only see rows unique to the first table. Let's take a look at a query now. Again, we only need to change a single keyword to except. We should see lecturers that teach only maths and don't teach IT at the same time. Keep in mind that some databases use the keyword minus instead of except. What's more, there are also such databases that accept either of the two. The table you can now see on the screen shows the most popular databases alongside the keywords they accept. MySQL and Oracle use minus, while PostgreSQL and SQL Server use the keyword except. Check the documentation of your specific database to find out the details. So, that's it when it comes to set operations. Remember to leave a comment or a thumbs up if you liked the video. I hope you will subscribe to our channel and let's learn SQL together.